What's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and I got five things that you need to do to get the best and most value from consultations. A lot of artists want to talk to people to do consultations, trying to figure out what do I do next? What do I need to do? Am I good enough? All of these little things. However, after they spend the money for a consultation, they're not making sure they actually get their values worth from the consultation. So these are the five things that you need to do if you reach out to anybody for a consultation. The first thing, it seems obvious, but it's not done a lot of times, and that's have questions pre-written. However long your consultation is, you will get the best out of it if you're not having to think of questions on the spot. Of course, some things will happen organically and naturally throughout conversation, but at least make sure you get the things that you want out of that asked. Now, that leads to number two. What is your purpose for this call? What is your goal? You have to have a goal of the call. I've sat on on some people's consultations or even did consultations in the past where people will be talking and they're asking questions and the conversation gets flowing and near the end of the consultation, all of a sudden, they remember what their primary purpose of the call is. As a matter of fact, I would ask, hey, so I just wanna make sure you get the most value of this call, what's the reason of the call? Because I just realized a lot of time got wasted. Now, I ask it sometimes at the beginning of the call, but that's something that you need to know yourself so you can get what you came for because you're paying the money. Number three. What are your goals for the next one month, two months, three months? Get an idea of what you want to achieve because that's what you need to communicate to this person, whoever you're doing a call with. You need to communicate to them so they can know how they're helping you. One thing that I've heard times when I've done consultations or when people wanted me to do consultation and I happen to agree, people would say, so what's the consultation for? You're charging however much you're charging. You're charging $20, $50, $100. What is going to happen on the call? What should I expect? Bruh, you are reaching out to someone for a consultation. You determine what gets talked about. It's for you. I can't just have a pre-established template of what's going to get done on the call when it's based on all your unique needs. Anybody who has a consultation that's completely a template and not based on your needs, will not necessarily be able to give you the value you need, and that's just not worth it. It's not a me thing, it's a you thing and the value that you need. Remember this. Number four, get yourself a monthly budget. Have some sense of a monthly budget. You do not have to volunteer this information before the call if they don't ask. You don't have to volunteer it during the call because it might not even apply to what you're doing, right? You might be talking about just some of the notes and bolts or and you know, some legal information or whatever, but at least know what your monthly budget is towards whatever that thing you might be doing or having a sense of that, just in case it does come up and is relevant to the person and it's something you wanna reveal. But don't let it be something that you've never thought of at all because I've caught people there, have a sense of what you can do because that person, if they're good at what they do, they will be able to give you advice based on your budget. They're not gonna give you something far above because when we're talking about leaving a call, achieving that goal, it needs to be something you can execute on. Which leads me to number five, do research on whoever you're speaking to. Try to hit them up about something that they know about. Don't just ask people just because they have some sort of position about anything because, hey, they might not know any, anything about the thing that you want to talk about. And on top of that, some people just don't necessarily like to talk about certain things. Like, I don't like to talk about legal paperwork and things like that, but there's people who specialize in that stuff and they kill it. And with that being said, I got some people to recommend that you can do consultations with because I know people are looking for people who aren't scammers, just gonna take their money just because. These people, if they feel like they cannot help you, they will not help you. They will pass you along if they don't have space for you or whatever. These are some solid people. So number one, and this is in no particular order, just some random people that I thought of in like literally one minute, but I know they're valuable. Number one, Corey the Savior. You seen buddy on my channel. Y'all should already know about Corey. If you don't know, now you know. Marketing, Spotify, playlisting, all that good stuff, that's Corey. Number two, Curtis Kane. That guy, YouTube channel, killing it. Especially if you are a producer who is trying to figure out how to make money online, that guy is a go-to guy. He's worth your money. 
Sir Love. Now you should already know about Sir Love if you watched all the videos on my channel. You say you watched all the videos on my channel. You ain't watched them all if you ain't seen Sir Love. Sir Love, also some people just call him Phase Six because that's the name of the YouTube channel that he also has. But if you're talk, if you're a manager looking at some booking information, a lot of the legal paperwork, the nuts and bolts of the industry, he's a nuts and bolts guy. He knows, he knows a lot of stuff reach out to him but for real he understands the way a lot of things are connected particularly building from ground up and the way some of these meetings are right you about to sign a record deal or go into a record meeting he knows the prep that you need to have or if you're what how you should present yourself to some of these people a lot of those things that's a guy worth reaching out to damian ritter it's another guy where we're talking about the business side of things right damian if you can figure out how to link with him hey i will go to him for you know if you're a manager as well or you're building a record label a lot of things like that we're talking about he's somebody i would look to him and sir love um if i'm a manager another person i guess this makes person number five which is kato Kato's a producer. You probably seen my interview with him. Kato's a very experienced producer. He's done a lot of things in the industry. Worked with an indie label, Funk Volume. Like, just do your research on him. We I did the interview with him. Kato's a reliable guy. Number six, Henny the Business. Henny's a very very experienced producer in the industry. Really dope guy. Very helpful. If you can figure out how to link with him for consultations, he's, you know, producer, placements, uh, just understanding the inner workings of a producer on the industry side, he's been there, he's done it. Um, songwriter stuff, he's been there, he's done it. Understanding the legalities around that production and songwriting and licensing and sample clearance, all that stuff, go to that man. If you reach out to him and all the people that I'm listening right now on IG, I'm sure they will respond when they have chances. Uh, Lilo Key is number seven. You've probably seen my interview with that guy. He is an artist, but when he has time, I'm sure he'd be open to some regular consultations as well. He would be somebody I would hit up and say, hey man, can I just get a consultation? Can I just talk to you? Because he's done so many things independently just by himself as an artist and learning all these inner workings of the business. Um, he's done a lot. Go rewatch his interview that I did with him. If you want to get a sense of what he knows and just the path that he's taken. He has a lot of views on YouTube. He has a lot of views on Spotify and navigating that as an artist and getting on certain playlists or getting certain connections that he was able to get when we talk about Rap Nation and Trap Nation or just some of those random pages. I'm kind of random now, but a lot of those things as an artist that a lot of people are trying to get into, he's done. I would even listen to his music to see if you're a similar style because that would really let you know, hey, if I'm somewhere in the range of where he is, he could probably help me as far as what directions and to look to and what type of people value this type of music in the business. Hey, and that's it. Um, as you guys know, personally, I really don't do consultations that often, uh, at least not anymore, but whenever I'm open for it, like for another three days, randomly or something like that, you know, a couple times a year, I'll announce it on the channel. Other than that, remember, reach out to all these people, go discover them. The names will be written on the screen throughout the video, but I'm not even gonna put all that information in the bio because I find a lot of people just hit people up and they're not even ready for it and they don't come prepared, even though I just did a video about the things to prep yourself and get the value out of it. Y'all people just hit them up and say, hey, just, just wanna say, hey, you're cooler, and not actually try to use these people strategically and use them in a way that you're being mindful of their time and even making the most out of your own. So remember those things, try to get it done in a way that's very professional and make the best out of everybody's time. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.